Hey everybody, it's Ben. Hooray! And so forth. Let's see, white balance. Yeah. Where's the... Oh, there it is. Always refresh. Even I have to refresh. That's why I got a haircut today, so I can refresh. Hope you guys like my haircut and beard trim. Ooh, watermelon. Mm. I got two Perrier, one for each of you. Hey, Glory B. Here, you want to be on the stream? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Clark Payne. Mm hmm. <laughs> It looks a little yellow in here, but we hired Coldplay to do our lighting. So, yeah, what are you going to do? Remember to always refresh. We should be on Chess TV in about 20 minutes. Ooh, both of my dogs are here. One for each of you. If you guys want to be on the stream, you have to sit on the couch. Then they can see you. Yeah. One of my dogs has a cone because he was bleeding. Uh, I took him to the vet. They gave him stitches. And they put a cone so he doesn't nick, you know, needs to take medicine, so forth. And the other one doesn't have a cone. Thanks, HCC Faust. You've subscribed for four months plus nine. Hmm. That's a good dogs. Yeah. Yeah, I'm streaming. Isn't that exciting? No, no, no. Yeah. Come here. Come here, Kazoo. Up. Yeah, up. Here, if you if you sit up here, they can they can see you. Come on. Up. No? You're too chicken to be on camera? Aw. I'm just gonna play with you for a couple hours. That'll be a good stream. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, tin foil hat. You're the best hat. Thanks, Octomom. TL or T173. 100 centages. Thank you. Xenoid with the 7% inflation. 428. Yeah, that's two dogs. One for each of you. You want to get up here, Kazoo, and show me your cone? Yeah, you don't have to be a shy. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, this dog's about 74 pounds. The other dog's about 62. The other one's barking. Karen's taking a nap. Show me. Yeah, they, they like to bark when they see things outside. Uh, they bark insanely. Which is good. Except for one thing. Yay! Go, go hype train. So, mm. yeah, they just bark insanely when they see people or anything outside. Cars, crazy. <clears throat> Scary when they bark too, because they bark really loud. <laughs> DS Panda, hooray, subscribed. You're the best panda. There's a lot of pandas in chess, especially in the U.S. Yeah. I know several. I <clears throat> I used to get paired with them a lot, so I stopped playing in tournaments because I couldn't bear it. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus. I'm coughing on watermelon? Yeah. Mm. Milk the Funk subscribed. Hooray! Kobe. Peter Griffin gave a hundred cent to do's. Aw. Hey, Kazoo. Come here. Up. Up. Yeah, there you go. Come on. They want to see on the stream. Yeah. I'm streaming. Yeah, you understand what that means. 
except for one thing. This is actually our piano room. We call it the, f wait, this isn't the family room. The other one's the family room. I don't know what this is. There's two pianos here, so I guess it's the piano room. Yeah, we got two pianos, one for each of you. One's an upright Yamaha and one's uh, electric. Thanks, Runamucker. And I think I missed Laszlo Damas. Or maybe I didn't, but I thought I did. Uh, GMP, yeah, Laszlo Damas subscribed. Go hype train. Runamucker31. Yeah, so I have two dogs, two pianos, two Perriers, two monitors, if you don't count the laptop monitor. And there's two pieces of watermelon left. That's a good dog. Try not to bump into the camera. Although if you do, it'll be fine. That's good content. San V subscribed. 22 months. Quack, quack. It is watermelon time in Georgia because I'm eating it. If I'm not eating it, then it's not. Or something like that. Karen buys watermelon, then I eat it. Then she's like, where'd the watermelon go? Mm. Yeah, I agree. What's funny is, without even talking about chess, this is still the best beginner lesson on the internet. Aw, you guys are laying here. They're both laying on the floor under me. How you guys doing? Tired? All right, just want to hang out. Try to, like, donate and stuff so it makes noises and they get, you know, they can hear stuff. Uh, Woot Team 90, they're nothing to mess with. Thanks for the 100 cent to So, <clears throat> beginner lessons are few and far between on the internet. That actually prevents new players from playing chess because when they watch chess videos or they read a chess book, it's just way too hard. And they're like, you know, I'm going to play checkers or something. or you know. They'll do something easier like nuclear physics. So um, the reason chess is difficult isn't because, you know, of your intellect, although that doesn't help. It's because you have to do it 100 trillion times and not care about the result. You have to care about learning. And actually... Uh, there are some grandmasters that feel the same way about themselves, like Alex Lenderman. Lenderman would like to win, because everybody does, but he looks at it as a learning experience, especially if he's playing, you know, people that are higher rated than him. And basically, chess is always a learning experience. And if you're put off by losing, and or you look at chess the wrong way and just compare yourselves to other people who are better than you, that's not going to be good for your psyche. And in fact, if you were number 10 in the world, okay, and then you compared yourselves to the top five players in the world, you might think, man, I'm not good at this game. I wish I was as good as them. And everybody feels that way. Everybody feels like they could be better. And... If you're a beginner and you haven't played chess, you're not sure the names of the pieces, you don't necessarily remember how they move all the time. It's embarrassing for a lot of people, but that's the way all people are. You, you can't, you never played the game before, then unless you're Morphe, you can't play very well. Thanks, Seaburn1985. Hola. Thanks, uh, T173 or TL73 for the 200 cent to do's. Go hype train. Yeah. Oh, that's two good dogs. This is like the the insurance commercial, uh, progressive, I guess, where the dogs wanted to take a nap, so they came in here and heard me talking, and they fell right asleep. All right, we need a hundred centidus in the next twenty seconds. Okay, we got it. Thanks, TL seven three. You're the best. I guess his initials are TL. He was born in seventy three. Although I made all that up, so. <clears throat> Thanks, C Burn, for the five subs. No, I got burned. Well, the basement's getting restructured. So, did you give five subs again? I'm getting confused over here. Hold on a second. That could be that you didn't. I'm just crazy. 
Could be you did. Oh, you subscribed first, said Ola. Then you gave five subs. Then GM Peter Griffin gave us subs. And then the large women. Then the petite women. Then the large women again. And that's what happened. <clears throat> okay, so... The way to get better at chess for anybody, but especially the people that I'm talking about here, which is most of you, 650 and under, is to play a lot and to not worry about the result, but worry, worry about what you've learned. So I have a funny story, which I've told before. I was at a chess camp and there were two kids who always lost every game. And that's not easy to do at a chess camp. To lose to the other kids who can't play. So that's, you know. Thanks trying to learn. Thanks, Thorn Tro. And, and I showed them this. I showed both of them this. And then I don't know if I showed here or here. I don't know. Okay. And I said, that's checkmate. That's called the scholar's mate. And they were like, well, I said, now, <clears throat> you guys don't win very often. But if you do that, you'll win some because your opponents won't know it. And then you'll win a game. You'll be like, yay. And not only can you do that, but if your opponent tries to do that, you got to try to stop them. And I showed them some ways to stop Queen F7 and 8. And they said, okay. Then they played a game, the, the two kids. Okay? And this was the game. Okay, mate. And the kid with white said, mate. And the kid with black said, that's not mate. And he sat there looking for like a minute. He says, oh, okay. Like he, he couldn't find a move. Okay. Then they played again. And the same thing happened. And the kid said, that's not mate. And he looked for it. He says, okay. Then they played again. And the same thing happened. He, he denied it was mate. And he looked. And I, I asked the kid, like, do you play golf or tennis? Okay. So for beginners... Remembering stuff is really difficult, as you can see with that one kid. By the way, the other kid was doing cartwheels. He won three games. He's never won before. Nobody's ever been as happy as the kid who won. Um, <clears throat> right. And the thing is, the reason people don't learn anything is they don't understand what's happening. And they are confused when you're showing them. So there's a lot of people who just can't move the pieces. They can't remember. And that's why it's important to play lots of chess. And if you're doing something illegal, your opponent can say, oh, that not. And then, you know, after like 100, 200, 300 games, you can probably play a legal game. Now, <clears throat> people learn at different paces. And so t normally... You're learning a lot when you're a kid because you don't know anything. So you're learning. And some kids learn faster than other kids. And in some instances, the kids who don't learn as fast in general, they might learn something else faster, very specific. And kids like to tease each other and they like to one up each other. So they make fun of the kids who are slower and those kids don't want to play anymore and so forth. And basically, we live in a world where everybody's mean, okay? And I try to fit into the world, so, you know. Um, <clears throat> but actually, beginners don't remember things because they haven't looked at it 100,000 trillion times. And a lot of people will tell me, you're a grandmaster, so you don't understand what a beginner's thinking. You think when I first started playing chess, I was a grandmaster? I was a beginner longer than most of you have been. Uh, I started, I learned the rules when I was five and I played in tournaments at the ages of five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I played tournaments all the time. My dad was a master. My brother was always better than me until he stopped playing. And when I was nine, after playing four to five years of tournament chess, I was 1100. And my first rating was 900. This was back in the 1970s. So. And... You know, I lost every game, basically. I lost and I lost and I lost and I lost. And I remember things like when I was 11-15, I beat a 15-81. I was like, yes, you know, in a slow game. 
Uh, thanks for the 300 cents to do TL73. And w one of the things that differentiates <clears throat> stronger players from beginners is beginners don't remember what happened. So you can't really learn because you don't remember. So for example, you okay? It's okay. I mean, if you're a plumber and you have an assistant who doesn't know how to be a plumber and you show the assistant something, it says you do it and the assistant does it, then the, then the next day you show the same thing and they do it. And eventually they can do it. I don't know if it takes a week or a year or one day. Problem with chess is it's not one thing that makes sense to a beginner. It's just a lot of stuff. There's a lot of pieces. There's a lot of squares. They all move differently. So if you're a beginner, it's very easy to get frustrated. For reasons I don't understand, and I'm talking about me, thanks for the 100 cent to do's Nero fan. Thanks for the sub, Midnight Mui. For reasons I don't understand, I loved chess when I was taught chess. And it didn't matter if I won, lost, or drew. I like going to chess tournaments. I like playing chess. I like playing blitz chess. I like playing slow chess. I like keeping notation. I like hitting the clock. I like hanging out. I don't know why. And so I wasn't good for many, many years. And then as Bobby Fischer said, but not about me, I just got good. And me just getting good was like seven years after how I learned how to play. And I've played 10,000 games and my dad's a master and my brother was better than me. <clears throat> getting good at chess means not giving up. It's also how you get good at anything. And you don't have to learn stuff to get better at chess. To get better at chess, you have to play a lot of chess. And once you've played many, 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 many games, many, you'll learn patterns because you've seen them so many times. You don't have to specifically learn the pattern. You'll just see it. And if you're getting scholars mated every game, which happens to some kids and some adults, you have to learn ways to meet that. And a lot of people forget how the pieces move when they're first learning because they all move a different way. So it's very confusing. And I understand that confusion. Now, the two things I teach to beginners when I was teaching a lot, you guys are beginners, so listen up. If you guys do well this lesson, I'll put you, we'll go to the Scholastics, I'll put you in the K-9 section. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are pretty young to play chess, but I think you can do it. Yeah, good dogs. Um, but you have to take this off. They don't like, you know, you have to wear a mask, not this cone. <clears throat> I talk to my dogs a lot because... They don't type back like, I hate you, like you guys do. Synthetic Assault subscribed, narrow fan, 100 cent to do's. All right. So the two things I teach beginners are get your minor pieces out, all of them, and play in the middle. And I say, do that every game. And some of them do sometimes, and usually they don't. But you know, I tell them every single time we talk. And then I tell them, when you can take something for no particular reason, then you should take it. And I tell them if they take something and they're going to lose something bigger, then don't do it. So I show this position a lot. If you're a beginner and somehow you see you can take this pawn, maybe you don't. Maybe the, moving the knight's really hard. You have to see if it's defended. And I tell my students that when I was teaching. And I say, if I take this pawn for free, can black take my knight? And most of them can find here, but some don't know how the pieces move. And the reason people don't get better at chess, thanks Ivan Karamatsov, is because when two beginners are playing, white will go here and black will just make some random move that may or may not be legal, you know, like here. And then white will play check and black will go here because black doesn't see the captures. Black's like, damn, I'm in check. And then white doesn't see knight takes rook, so white plays here. And the games look sort of silly. And the reason they look silly isn't because 
they're not playing in the center or developing their pieces, which they're not. That's not why it looks silly. It looks silly to you because they're not taking things for free. And most tactics books will show you tactics that are too complicated. Okay? So, for example, this could be in a tactics book. If you're a beginner and you have black, this is too hard. And you feel stupid when some person like you, you, says like, well, this is easy. You go check and you take the bishop. How do you not see that? For a beginner, that's impossible to see. For a beginner, it's very difficult to see this as check. It's very difficult to see this. It's difficult to see if you take this that the rook can take back. All that stuff is tough. It's tough. And that's not what I want to teach beginners. That's what I teach advanced students is things like that. What I teach beginners is, you know, in this position, can white capture anything? And they say, what does capture mean? And I'm like, I don't know. Okay. And if they find that, and I say, is that a good move? They're like, yeah, I, I captured a pawn. And I'm like, right. And if I say in this position, black can't capture the pawn, and they agree eventually. And I say, after here, black can capture the pawn. How can black do that next move? And these kinds of things are impossible. If you're a beginner... And in your mind, you're like, I'm going to move this pawn somewhere, and then I'm threatening that. That's way too complicated. That, that's, that's not beginner stuff. That's advanced stuff. Beginner stuff is, can you take this? That's beginner stuff. Beginner stuff is, oh, my God, I didn't see that. I forgot pawns take that way. So if you're teaching <clears throat> a brother, a sister, a wife, a husband, a father, a mother uncle or aunt or a friend of yours how to play chess they don't remember how the pieces move unless they've played hundreds of games because moving the pieces doesn't really make a lot of sense the pawn goes one or two squares then it can only go one it captures a different way and then you're supposed to calculate and figure out if i take can black recapture and that's just too hard you can't you can't expect that of a beginner if you told a beginner you should go checkmate because the king can't move anywhere, they'll believe you. They won't say, oh, well, excuse me, teacher. Why can't I go here and block it? They're not going to say that. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, it's me. You're right. Because it's too hard for them. Those are puzzles you should show a beginner. You should say, if black plays here, can white take that pawn? And if they're like, no, you're like, yeah, you can. And they're like, oh, that's right. Pawns take that way. Or they'll deny that you told them that. Like, you didn't tell me pawns could take that way. Hey, you probably didn't either. And if you say, this is check, is that checkmate? They'll say yes. Then you'll say, no, it's not. You can block. And they'll go, oh, can I block this way? And you're going to get frustrated because they can't remember how the pieces move. If you play hundreds and hundreds of chess games and you're not playing very well, you'll learn how the pieces move. And that's the first step. And the basic calculation of taking something is enough tactics for a beginner. The beginner should be taught, what can you take? And this is actually very common with chess teachers, not just me. Okay, so I'll set up a position like this. And I'll say, okay, it's white's turn to move. Show me all the captures. If you're a beginner, there's a 0% chance you can show all the captures. Zero. And some of them will suggest this. Some will suggest this. Some will suggest that. And they'll frustrate you as a coach. Chess is just really difficult. If you've played hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of chess games, like most of you have, that's not hard for you. But when you first learned chess, you didn't know what the hell was going on. There's just a lot of stuff happening. And when you're teaching, you have to realize your student is having trouble seeing the legal moves. So for me, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. White has six captures. And if you told me I was wrong and there was seven, I would believe you. 
because I didn't do like a deep study. That's just my first inclination. And black, as far as I can tell, has two captures. One, two. For a lot of people, for most of the world, that's difficult. And so when you teach your students made in two and how do you do a fork, you're starting way too hard, way too hard. One thing I did was I'll show the students a position where somebody's in check and I'll ask them, how many illegal moves do you have? Okay, and this is a good example. So I bet Mike Cummer, who was about 1750, $5. And I said, you can't tell me the correct number of legal moves for white. And I'll give you two minutes on the clock. And that's your first answer. So he's thinking there, he's taking his time, he's re, and he's like, okay, I'm done after like a minute. And he gave the wrong answer and I won $5. And that's a good puzzle for a beginner is you're in check. How many ways are there out of check? And there's a 0% chance they'll get them all right. Zero. Zero. And for you, that might be easy, but it's not easy for them. It's hard to see that this knight can block in two places. This can, this can, this can. It's just hard to see. Terrible. Let's see. There should be six, but I only see five. So I'm getting confused. Is this even the right position? Yeah. Two, three, four, five. There's only five. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think Mike Cummer said five and there were six. Did I show him a different position? I might have shown him with the pawn on e3 so he had king e2. And now I don't know. I mean, this was like 11 years ago. I can't remember what happened. All I remember was I got five bucks. Maybe I told him there was, I told him there was six and there were five and I took his money. <laughs> Thanks, Tony Howell. So if you're a beginner and you're not sure how the pieces move or you're not sure how to capture or you're not sure what checkmate is, that's nothing for you to feel bad about. That's very difficult. Everything's very difficult when you don't know it. And... If you're 1,500, in your mind, grandmasters are great at chess, and why don't beginners see anything? What's wrong with them? And if you're 2,000, you're like, grandmasters are great. Why is this 1,200 so bad? Why can't he be as good as me? And everybody has different life experience. Everybody thinks differently. Everybody learns at a different level. And a lot of people just haven't played a lot of chess. So if you told me somebody played in 10 chess tournaments a year for 30 years, and they've played 100,000 games on the internet in those 30 years, you know, if they were rated 600, that would be odd. It's possible. Possible. If you told me you taught your friend the rules and they played 10 blitz games on chess.com just having learned the rules and they were 1800, that would also be odd. <clears throat> you have to learn at your pace, not at the pace of people you know. Maybe you're faster, maybe you're slower. And you wanna, if you're teaching a beginner or you are a beginner, you wanna do the simplest things possible, okay? So here's, a, here's one that I like to show my students also. Okay. I tell my students, and when I say students, I mean previously when I taught. I tell my students, black has a lot of moves here that are check, and one of them's checkmate. Can you show me all the checks? If you're a beginner and you've just learned the game and you haven't played a lot, there's no way you can show all the checks. Zero percent chance. And if you're teaching somebody, you want to show them like this is check, this is check, and they'll be like, oh yeah. And even if you're like 15, 1600, your first guess is going to be wrong. Sorry. You have to like really hunker down to like see how many checks there are because there's a lot. So you just put, you know, a red mark on a square where there's a check. Sorry. And then, okay, here obviously with the bishop. 
and then here. And I probably missed one. I don't see which one I missed, but I might have missed one. I thought there were 10 from teaching previously, and I've put markers on 10 squares. There could be one I'm missing. I doubt it. Am I missing one? It's 11? Wow. I still only count 10. The missing one? Could be. ATC Faust is confusing himself. Then you ask which one is checkmate, and they, there's nothing. Because for a beginner, these moves are all the same. They don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't know what's going on. They don't even know if this is legal or this is legal. For you, it's easy, but for them, it's not. And that's because they have to play a lot and get used to positions where they're in check and how to get out of check and so forth. And these kinds of puzzles are very difficult for a beginner. And most teachers and most videos online and most books, when they're for beginners, everything is way too hard, way too hard. And if you're teaching beginners and you're making things too difficult, they're, they're not gonna like chess because you're not teaching it right. And the same goes for math in high school. If you have a really good math teacher in high school, you will like math. If you don't, you will not like math. And it's basically in high school where it starts. Um, and I've had teachers in high school that couldn't do the math they were teaching us. And then I had ones where they explained everything perfectly, understood everything. Now, um. hi, Chess TV. How are you? Oh, Queen E4 was made. Sorry. Tax the king. You can't block. And there's a, the, the squares that you flee to. Um, I put a red hot chili pepper <clears throat> on the squares you thought you could flee, but there was no flee. Now, what's funny about this is <clears throat> if I go here instead of here and black makes the same move, white has all three ways to get out of check the block, the capture, and the moving the king. And again, this is a good for a beginner. Show all the ways that stop check. And it's too hard, but you know, they show you their answers, then you show them the right ones. So then you ask them which is best. Hopefully they say that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Oh, I know what I did wrong in the other one. I know what I did wrong. I'm an idiot. This is the one where there's six. I'm sorry. <laughs> I showed the wrong position. So one, two, three, four, five, six. If you show this to players under 1,500 and ask how many legal moves white has, you're better than 50-50, they'll be wrong. Yeah, this one is six, and the, I forgot the position I was showing. Yeah, Terrible. So for beginners... When you're playing on the side, you need to give a reason for something you learned to explain yourself. Thanks, Mountain Dude. Yeah. Uh, Joe's Gambit is, uh, he, he would go here, then he would take that. He didn't care what move you made. That's He, he liked to do that. Okay. Don't recommend it. <clears throat> When you're a beginner and you make a move, I, tell, I told my students, if you tell me I'm playing in the middle or I'm getting my bishops and knights off the back row or I took his queen, I took his knight, I took his rook, those are acceptable answers. So whenever you make a move, you should be ready for someone to question you. And if you go here on move one, and I say, why did you go there? They say, I like to go there, or I don't know. So you have to reinforce, play in the middle, get your bishops and knights out, and then maybe they know how to castle, maybe they don't, 
And you have to reinforce taking pieces is the most important. And a lot of times when they don't take pieces, they just don't care. Like, I'm not taking that piece. Or they don't see it. They do care, but they don't see it. And so there's different reasons why people make mistakes. When they say, I don't know, which they always do, it's frustrating. So let's say this is the position. And they're white. And they go here. And I say, okay, did you see you could take their queen? If the answer is no, it's bad that they went here. They were so close. If the answer is yes, and I say, then why didn't you? And they'll say, I don't know. Now, could be they don't think much of taking a queen. Like, so what? It could be they're lying to you. They didn't see they could take the queen, but they told you they could. But it could just be taking a queen, so what? So then you have to do some teaching. The stuff that we like to teach about the center and development pales in comparison to taking things. Now, there's a florist place in the United States called Wesley Berry Florists. And the guy's son who ran the operation, he was also Wesley Berry, I gave him chess lessons. And I remember our first game was like this. It wasn't exactly like this, but it was, you know, I'm, I'm getting there. Okay. This was approximately our first game. Approximately. Very similar. Exactly. And in his mind, taking things was just random. Take something, I take something, you don't take something, I don't take something. He didn't, he didn't care. It meant nothing to him. So he wasn't like, oh no, I lost every, he didn't care. <clears throat> you have to get beginners to care about losing material. No barking. I said no barking. They don't listen to me. Come here, who wants a treat? They'll start barking if I say that. They'll come to get a treat. Yeah. Are you barking? Yeah, that's good. Hey, you can sort of see them a little. Yeah, don't bark. Because then rawr, we're mad. Yeah. They're beginners. They just bark. <clears throat> Etc. Yeah. If you defend that taunt pawn, you'll get a treat. Thanks, Grunge War, for the 200 cent to do's. Yeah. Yay, 2,300 viewers. We're doing beginner chess. And <clears throat> when you're a beginner, every move you make, every breath you take, Kasparov will crush Sting. Wait, that's not what I meant to say. All right, well, you didn't get it anyway, so. Um, complicated joke. Oh, that's a good dog. Yeah. Oh, you want to be on the stream? Did you get that joke? No, you didn't. We saw Sting at Caesar's Palace in his residency. Unlike Adele, he showed up. Yeah. He's not completely insane like she is. Yeah, exactly. I was in the basement. Now I'm in the doghouse. But I'm bumped. Thanks, Grunge Wart. Yeah. I know what was I saying? Oh yeah, stay out of my booze. Good Simpsons joke. Oh. Aw. Oh. Aw. Don't knock over the camera. Now you look you look like you're about to knock over the camera. You need to have it instilled in you. Thanks, uh, Lawful Waffle, for the money. Wait, you're not banned? What's going on here? Um, yeah. If you're a beginner or you're teaching beginners, it's very important that they understand taking things is good and losing things is bad. And one way to explain it to them is to tell them about the dangers for both sides. When white is going into his opponent's territory, 
and black is coming into white's opponent's territory. It's not just dangerous for one, it's dangerous for both. And it's sort of like, you know, let's say you're Russia and you're like, I'm going to come to the Ukraine. Well, Ukraine is weak, so that's they'll just win easily, right? And some of the Russian soldiers might think, if I stay home, I'm fine. But if I go into Ukraine, we may win the war in one day, but maybe I'll get killed. So it's very dangerous to go here. Very dangerous. So tell, I tell my beginning students, when you move past the middle with your pieces, they might get captured. So you have to watch for that. If you go here and you get captured, probably it's protected. Because when the game of chess starts, this is protected. All those squares are protected. Also, all these squares are protected. All those squares are protected. However, when you go here and here with your bishops and your knights, your opponent might take them. So you have to watch for that. And if it does happen, you have to try to remember. You need to remember when you lose things and then you have to remember when you lose them again, right? So you're white, you're a beginner, and you play here. And your opponent takes your bishop. And you're like, oh, man, I hate that. Then the next game, you do this again, and he takes your bishop. You're like, oh, man, not again. And at some point, you'll stop. You might have a smart aleck chess coach, and they're like, hey, have your knight defend that square, and then go here. Then if they take your bishop, you take their queen. And you're like, oh, awesome. And then you do that, and they go here. You don't even see you're attacking their queen because that's not what you were thinking about. You need to see all your captures and all your opponent's captures before you move. And you have to tell beginners when they put things on the fourth rank, they should have them protected if possible. And if they're not, every move they have to watch out and see if they can get captured. Here's a good example. This pawn's defended. This pawn is not. Is this pawn attacked? The answer is fries. So if it's attacked, you got to do something about it. And there's about 10 things you can do. You've got to do one of them. The strategy of which one is correct doesn't matter. What matters is you see that. That's the first step in getting better is your opponent attacks your pawn or your rook or your knight. You see it. And a blunder a lot of beginners make is their opponent's not threatening anything and they move something where it can be captured. So whenever you make a move as a beginner, doesn't matter where, can the thing you move be captured. When you're more advanced and you're a stronger player and you've been playing for 10 years, You'll learn more complicated things like if I move my bishop, this pawn, which heretofore was defended, can that be attacked? Can that be captured? But that's advanced. Don't tell your beginning students that. Can the bishop here be captured? Maybe, but the answer is no. And a lot of beginning students will think this knight can capture either illegally or by going here and taking it as they move. Here, here, take the bishop here. I get that a lot. Explaining the knight's difficult. One thing you can do if you have a somebody you're teaching who's a beginner, doesn't know how the pieces move, <clears throat> is you just put those pieces on the board. Teach them how the rook moves. You put four rooks on the board. The rest of the board is empty. And you say, let's move the rook. And hopefully they can move the rook. Then you take the rooks and go, gotcha, bitch. Yeah, that'll show them. <clears throat> and then you do the same with the other pieces. And then a lot of people can't remember the names of the pieces if they're beginning. So if you're a beginner, you have to learn how to set the chessboard up. You have to learn the names of the pieces and how each one moves. And that could take you over a year. Or it could take you four days. I don't know you. You don't know me. Like in Rick and Morty. Um... Ooh, period. Chess is hard unless you play it every day several times a day. Then the rules get easier. When you're a beginner, 
you shouldn't worry at all about winning and losing. You should worry about making legal moves. You want to play a whole game and make legal moves. And then you want to do it again and again and again. And you want to remember the names of the pieces. Now, a friend of mine, uh, Sasha Chapin, who wrote the book, it's in one of our Mubak commands. Also, that book was right here. Where? It's right there now? Let me see. Yeah, there it is. All the right moves. It's right there. He claims... Claims his wife plays chess. She doesn't know what checkmate is. If, if she checkmates you or you checkmate her, she doesn't know that. And he claims that she beats 1300s all the time on chess.com. Now, if she knows how the pieces move and knows the names of the pieces, okay, that's good. That, that she can win. And it still reminds me of the poker story. This guy who was a professional gambler, not just poker, but everything. His wife won a poker tournament and a guy asked her why she hadn't raised in when there were like two or three players left. And she said, what's raise? It's hard to believe because probably somebody raised at some point during the tournament and she would have noticed that, but. What's raise? Yeah. Yay, 3,000 esque viewers. I'm watermelon. Where'd my dogs go? So the simpler, the better. And don't make fun of somebody because they can't remember something. They can't remember it. If you were watching a heart surgery and the heart surgeon said, hey, let me tell you something about what I'm doing. The next day, you're not going to remember that. Oh, that's a good dog. But if you're a medical student and you can botch the heart surgery yourself until you learn it, you know, a few patients might not live, but at least you learn how to be a doctor. Oh, you're a good dog. Yeah. Right, Glory B? Yeah. Glory B agrees. <clears throat> Tying shoes isn't easy. But if you watch The Simpsons, over, under, in and out, that's what shoe tying's all about. Thanks, Principal Skinner. Yay, Bach BVW. He, he ain't seen nothing yet, Bach. Oh, wait a minute, that's the wrong Bach. Thanks for the sub. I'll do any surgery, 129.95. Yeah. Mm. Let's see, I'm reading the chat. I think it's teaching me not to read the chat. Oh. Okay, so let's look, let's make up a chess game that two beginners could play. I'm going to make it up. Okay, and here the game ends because white says checkmate and black says, oh, okay. That would be a typical beginner game. Let's analyze that game. Okay. Both sides knew this, and that was the end of Black's prep. White played, White played queen f3 because he knows some four-move checkmate. And he knows the queen goes here, the bishop goes here, and you do that. And Black has no idea what's going on. Black just makes a random move. Black makes a random move, and White thinks this is checkmate. And Black doesn't see king takes queen. And a lot of beginners believe, I actually don't know why they believe this. This is very common. A lot of beginners believe that if you're in check, your king can't take the piece that's checking you. Like, you can never do that. Obviously, if it's defended, then they would be right. But they don't care about that. They're like, oh, I can't take that. That's My king can't take the piece that's checking me. And I'm like, what? <clears throat> 
it's very hard to teach some beginners that rules that they know are not rules, that they're made up. Their friend told them, they misunderstood, and they don't know what's going on. So showing people that are beginning, show me all the checks in the position. Can you get out of the check or is that checkmate? A lot of beginner classes I've taught with kids, a lot of kids go here and say checkmate and half of their opponents go, oh, well, yeah, you're right. The people who say checkmate aren't necessarily like lying. They think it's checkmate. And the only way to get over these issues is to play a lot of chess. And a lot of people make this mistake, not only in chess, but other games and in their lives. They're afraid to do things until they think they're ready. You're ready when you're breathing. If you're not breathing, maybe not ready. Maybe. So if you're thinking, I want to play chess, but I don't want to lose my first hundred games. So I'm going to do a lot of studying. And then after five years of study, then I'll play in a chess tournament. Yeah, don't do that. That's not how you get good at chess. Imagine two random people. And this guy does the wrong thing. He waits five years. The other guy says, well, I'll play in tournaments and lose. And so he plays in five years of tournaments. And this guy never played a tournament, but studies all day. Then they both play. The guy who hasn't played just going to get destroyed. He doesn't have any recognition of what's happening. The things that are happening aren't in the books he read because his opponents are choking on their own. You know, he, he's not playing Kasparov here. So you have to play a lot and get used to it. And if you're losing, that's fine. That means you're like everybody else. And the way to get better is to play a lot. And hopefully, at some point, you will recognize things that have happened before that are good or bad, and then you've learned. You're like, oh, I did that once, and I lost seven pieces. I guess I won't do that again. Or... Last time I did that, my opponent mated me with this queen and bishop, so maybe I can mate him with a queen and bishop. And again, that's complicated, but if you've played chess for a year and you're losing all of your games, you might learn what a battery is. You might learn what a fork is. You might. But what's more important is making legal moves and having a reason why you made your move. If your reason is, I'm playing in the middle, I'm taking my opponent's pieces for free. I'm developing my bishops and knights off the back row because Ben told me to. Then you have a reason for your move. And then you might play this in some game. Thanks, C. Dallas. And then your opponent takes your bishop and you're like, Ben told me to get my minor pieces out. That didn't work at all. Right, then you'll learn what a safe square is. Whenever you move your bishops and knights and or other pieces here, they can get captured. And you have to see captures. And the more chess you play, the more captures you'll see. Mainly your pieces are getting captured. It's unfortunate. When I play somebody rated under 1,000, normally I just take their pieces because they put their pieces on squares where I can take them. Or they miss what are, to me, simple tactics. So I win more pieces. They don't want to lose a piece. They just don't... They can't see the moves that win their pieces. And it's not because they're bad at chess. It's because they haven't played a million games and I have. And I've played so many chess games. If there's a trick, I've seen it. If there's a blunder, I've made it. And that's what you need to do to get better is stop worrying about your results. Stop worrying about how your friends are. Well, and for a lot of parents, you know, the, the tiger moms, you know, my kid's 1,800 and he's six years old. Sounds good. But there's a kid in the country, across country, who's six and he's 1,900. Why am I such a terrible parent? The fact that that worries you, that helps make you a terrible parent. The way to get kids to get better at chess, if you're a parent, if you're a parent, that's amazing. That you, like, that you're a I can't even believe you're a parent. Amazing. If you are a parent, you want your kid to love the game. Like, can I play chess? I want to play chess now. Can you play chess, mom and dad, and I'll watch you play? 
That's the kid you want. If you're like, it's time for your chess lesson, and they go, no. Yeah, like that. Yeah, like that. That's not good. Right? Can't do that. Ooh, food. Wow. Um, I like to bark. I liked chess when I was a kid. Now, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the traps I learned as a kid in a book. A book is like, what is a book? It's like the internet on trees. This is one of the first traps I learned. It's in the Queen's Gambit accepted. And, and then the Rook and so forth. Mainly and so forth. And then, when I was older, I learned a similar trick in this position. This is a very uncommon move. Takes here. And this is the same. And now you play here, threatening this which is the same as the other trap. And they go here because your knight's pinned. And they think, ha ha, you're not winning. Then you go here, which I learned from Morphe versus Count and the Duke. Attacking this winning and attacking this winning a knight. For a beginner, this is way too hard. If you show this to a beginner, you have to get somebody else to teach the beginner. You're not the right teacher. This is something I would teach a 2000 player because there's 50 tactics in here. There's like the knight's pinned and the rook is trapped and we're double attacking here. And this double attack is just the reverse of the famous opera game, which was actually, you guys don't know this, the first opera game, not the one you know, was played by Adam Sandler. And in this position, which is a famous game, white play queen b3 with the same kind of ideas as we saw in the previous position, but on the other side of the board. If you play thousands and thousands and thousands of games of chess, you'll see exactly the same tricks sometimes, and you'll see variations of the tricks other times. You'll see like, oh yeah, that's I know that trick from this other opening. If you can make those connections, you can be good at chess. To make those connections, you have to play thousands and thousands and thousands of games. If you play one or two games and you read a lot of books, you keep those connections in your brain haven't happened. If you want to play great tactics, sometimes you have to blunder. Look at those good dogs. Yeah. Yeah, that's good dogs. What you guys looking at? looking somewhere etc and you recognize things because they've happened to you in games this is something a lot of advanced players know obviously a beginner wouldn't know it but an advanced player would okay and this kind of trick where white black wins a pawn blacks up a pawn here thanks fine gold fan seven Best player of all time? Um, for a thousand bits, it's you. Probably Morphe, maybe Fisher. Kasparov and Karpov are up there. Okay, in this position, advanced players know bishop check. And we're also attacking the queen. And we weren't attacking the queen last move because our bishop move, that's a discovered attack. So advanced players wouldn't play the move knight takes pawn because they know that. A beginning player is lucky to see that this pawn can be captured. And they'll never see that it can be captured and they can capture, and they'll never ever ever see this check. If two beginners are playing, <clears throat> it's possible black won't even take that because he didn't see white could take his knight. And if he does see that, and white's a beginner, white's not gonna play bishop here check winning the queen. And if white does play bishop here check, he's not gonna take the queen. Those are very, very, very complicated concepts that you think are simple because they're simple to you. They're not simple. There was a lot going on there. There was a lot of checks and captures and discovered attacks. That's only simple because you've seen it many times. It's not simple. 
And obviously the famous game Jatescu Fisher from the 19, I don't know, 62 Olympiad? I'm not sure if that's the right Olympiad. Somewhere around there. Um, White made the same blunder and Fisher won in 13 moves. The guy played queen takes a pawn here or something, or here, and then bishop h2 check, queen takes queen. And that guy was an IM, board one for his team. The rest of his team probably wasn't super confident after their best player lost in 13 moves by hanging his queen. Truth hurts. So if you think something is simple, it probably isn't. It's probably just simple for you because you've seen it a lot. For a beginner, seeing pawn takes pawn isn't simple. For a beginner, if I said after this, can white take your pawn? That's not simple. Thanks, our Bruce 2021. Thanks, Feingold Fan 7. Would Fisher beat Carlson? Only if you spell Fisher correctly. Then maybe. Th these questions can't be answered because the answer is nobody knows. Grishuk said something funny once in an interview. In fact, F Grishuk always says something funny in an interview. He said, Oh, if I played Morphe, I would crush him. If I played Steinitz, I would crush him. Bobby Fischer, this is another story. Yeah, Fischer, he, he made no claims. He said guys from 100 years ago, he beat them. He said, Fischer, I, I pass. <clears throat> Spassky said if he played Morphe, he'd offer a draw. Fischer said Morphe was the most accurate player that ever lived, and in the early 60s, he would be the best player in the world. And most top players think Morphy was no good. His opponents were no good, he was no good, and we would all crush him. And even very weak players like John Bartholomew, right, not even the top 500 in the world, says he would crush Morphy, which is absurd, but he believes that. He thinks people have gotten so much better at chess that even though he's not very good, and he would still beat Morphy. Okay, thinking's not his strong suit. His strong suit, if we're going to be serious here, I want to be serious. His strong suit is being the coach of the Rams. Now, that's his strong suit. Bartholomew got the Rams to the Super Bowl. So I'm not, you know. I thought he was a good football coach. Because he got the Rams to the, to the Super Bowl. But then he said, he said, yeah, the 85 Bears, we would crush them. They're no good. That was so many years ago. Okay, let me do my spiel. One thing you guys need to do is sponsor chess. Be a patron if you like chess. If you don't do that, if you don't get chess lessons from grandmasters, if you don't give money to their streams, if you don't pay entry fees so they can win prizes, they're going to go away and they're going to become doctors and lawyers. That's the worst thing I've ever heard. Go Farty Party and Zach Poprick. But if you like chess and there are streams you like or there are tournaments you like, you can ensure those continue on especially if you're well-to-do, like Rex Singfield does. He makes sure there's 500 million grandmasters in St. Louis, and they have the Singfield Cup and the U.S. Championship, U.S. Junior, U.S. Women's, and I could go on. <clears throat> because he likes chess, so he doesn't want chess players to be broke. So that's why I've started my talking point, NordVPN, my sponsor, is if I get sponsors, then... I'll be streaming more, I'll make more jokes, I'll make fun of you more. It's win-win. It's NordVPN is super fast servers, 5,200 plus in 59 countries. You can watch Netflix and other entertainment websites that are locking you out. They can unlock them. 30-day money-back guarantee. Guarantee void in Tennessee. Protects data while traveling in public. Cybersecurity suite, which acts as an ad blocker. No data logging. So if you watch Star Trek, they might log Captain Picard. They might log Worf, but no data logging. 24-7 customer support, up to six simultaneous connections, which one of our viewers said was great. 
think it was output coupler. Double data encryption, like a double guitar. Compatible with most operating systems, Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android. Now, if you come to my house and you need some help with your disk, we're, we're, we don't have that. The system's down. Unlimited bandwidth. Unlimited. Automatic kill switch. NordVPN has an extension for Chrome, which I like. IKE version 2 IP security protocol. P2P sharing allowed. I'm going to allow that. And it was voted best VPN, best VPN awards by VPN Mentor. Now, NordVPN might own them, but I don't know that. Probably they don't. Recommended by leading tech and VPN sources. VPN Mentor, Grandmaster Feingold, Karen Boyd, and PC Magazine. And um, if a new game is released in a different region of the world and you can't get it yet, yes, you can. And I wasn't sure about that talking point, so I started texting with, you know, one of my best friends, Barack Obama, and I said, if they don't have the game in my region, but they have it somewhere else, can I still watch that game? Can I get it? <clears throat> and he said, yes, you can. And I said, well, can you get it? And he said, yes, we can. And I was like, all right. So I, I you know, I believe what I'm told to believe. Yeah, uh, Marker... Should have done this before. End of Nord ad. All right. It says Santa Claus is coming in several months. That's Nord ad, not Nord ad. 100 cents to Jews. The more questions you ask, the more you donate. Is Figures Le Fisher's legacy tarnished? Not his chess legacy, but his sanity legacy is tarnished. Yeah. Thor Gonzo subscribed. All right, so hopefully you guys are using my discount code to get NordVPN, and they'll continue to sponsor. And if you want the discount code, you can type, you know, exclam. Yeah, it says it already. Yeah, Nightbot's telling you if you're watching on a laptop or a desktop, you can go to the panels under the stream, and one of them says Nord something. The dogs are attacking me. Now, the reason the dogs left is I have NordVPN. So they tried to attack, and I'm like, you know, NordVPN's like, get out. And they're like, all right, go attack somewhere else without NordVPN. Cool. Was Fisher ever sane? I'm sure he was. Maybe the last 10 or 20 years, no. I mean, he thought everybody was against him, and I was barely against him. I don't know why he's blaming me. Get to be in a Nordic country? Well, that I don't know. I'm going to say no. Yeah. Magus won the world championship. Magus? Good old Magus. Did he beat Fisher without a C? Man, the dog's going upstairs. Karen's going to come down. Rawr. This is a good chance to hear Karen swear at the dogs. <clears throat> She's sleeping. So. Yeah, I think he was kidding, uh, trying to learn. I think he's always kidding. No, actually, he did. Fisher did have a crayon lodged in his brain. And even though they took a lot of, you know, looking at his brain, they didn't see it because the doctor always had his finger over the, you know, where you could see it. If he just moved his thumb, they would have known that. Yeah. Too bad. Fisher was crazy like Fox News before Fox News. So that's good. Yeah. Exactly. And don't forget it. That's right. Stay out of my booze. Hello. Come here. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you want to be on stream, Glory B? Yeah, walk that way. You'll be on stream. There you go. Yeah. Do you respond to DMs on Discord? Those are usually the people that I ban. Frankly, delicious. 1,000 centidues. Could you beat Fisher at your peak? Like in a boxing match? No, he's tall and strong. I couldn't beat Fisher at anything. Now, <clears throat> if you're a beginner or if you're an advanced player, you might be surprised at what I'm going to tell you. Okay. Now... It's Karen. Was my streaming waking you up? No. 
No, I forgot about the gate. Yeah. I wouldn't anyway because all that stuff's back there. Well, I don't think so. I think there's a lot of garbage back there. Um, what was I saying? Stay out of my booze? No. Okay. If you're an advanced player and this lecture is too easy for you, it's probably not, then you know that if we start taking pieces, which we didn't do, the evaluation is going to be like, rawr, plus 5, plus 10, plus 15, and you're like, good, good. In this position, <clears throat> white has captured nothing. Black has captured nothing, and white has no threats. If it's white to move, you know, castle or something. And so, no matter how good you are at chess, you may misunderstand this position. If two super grandmasters are playing a slow game, white is winning, and white's going to score 95% here in a slow game against another player of his own rating. And so you won't see this position because you don't become a grandmaster by playing this badly. And the engine, this isn't the best engine. This engine's okay. It says white's up 2.5, even though white's not up anything. Because white's moves are reasonable and black's moves are not reasonable. Now, obviously, if you're a beginner and you can't see a tactic, that's normal. You didn't see a capture. You didn't see a check. Okay. But if you have a coach or you're listening to me and I'm like, play here, get your knights and bishops out, and you see one guy does that and the other guy goes here and here and here, nothing to do with what I was teaching, why would you do that? Why do you make moves that have nothing to do with anything anybody's ever taught ever? How'd you come up with that? But if you move these pieces out like you're supposed to and put your pawns near or in the center or controlling the center, then if you lose quickly, which you will, it's because you didn't see some captures. You know, you, you, you had the black pieces and you were doing what you were told and you didn't see pawn takes bishop. And then you kept doing what you were told and you didn't see pawn takes knight. Then you did what you were told and you don't know the en passant rule and you think your opponent's cheating. Okay? And then here you're like, I didn't get my bishop out yet. And then, you know, you look at the position and you're like, where'd all my pieces go? You followed my advice, but the more important advice is to not lose your pieces. The only thing you need to do as a beginner to get better is to not lose all of your pieces, which is something, maybe I'm asking too much, probably am. The way to avoid losing all your pieces is before you make a move, can, I, can he take what I just moved? 50-50. And when my opponent moved, what is he threatening? Here, nothing. If you go here, you're letting somebody take your pawn. That's something you don't want to do is make a move and your opponent takes it. And you're like, oh, I didn't see that. Now, let's say you're a tricky person, like in general, you're a games player. You're, you're smart. You're, you're sneaky. You're tricky. And you're like, man, that teacher told me if I go here, the guy will take it. And that guy had the same class I did. So I'm going to go here, and then he's going to take it because the teacher said so, but I'm going to take his bishop. He won't see that. That's like a beginner sneaky trick. And then when the guy takes it, <clears throat> if you're watching the game and you're rated 2,000, you're like, blah, bishop takes g5. And then black goes, I knew he would do that. That's why I played h6. And you're like, what? What world am I in? Right? Because you didn't know your opponent was going to do that when you played g5, but the beginner did. Because in the beginner's mind, he just tricked his opponent. He's like, take my pawn, I dare you. I double dare you. Do they speak English and what? Then he said, after he took the bishop, I'm not through with you by damn sight. I'm going to get medieval on your ass. You hear me talking? Yeah, I couldn't believe he said all that. So that's like a beginner's trick is to let your opponent do something that to an advanced player is absurd. But beginners are like, who takes something? Right? So the beginner who wants to play a trap plays here. And he's hoping his opponent takes the pawn. And some people will. And then you take their knight and you're like, yay. Then they attack your queen. You don't see it. They take your queen. But the truth hurts. 
<clears throat> when you're a beginner, you're just giving pieces away all the time. And you have to not do that. So you have to learn from each game. When I was an advanced beginner, I was probably six or seven. I had this position in a league game. And I took this. And I saw that. And I saw that. And I was pretty happy. I got two pawns for a bishop. I saw all of that. And I was like, yay. No, it's, I wasn't a grandmaster then. A bishop is worth way more than two pawns. Don't do that. Don't give pieces away. But that's what I did. I was like, man, I got this pawn, this pawn. Did it like this. I did it like that. Beastie Boys didn't even exist yet. That's, yeah, oh no, my various pieces. That's right. Now, to you guys watching, half of you think this is a comedy show and you're laughing. It ain't no comedy show. You don't make fun of people because they don't know what's going on. If you're playing Kramnik and Kramnik hangs his queen, then you make fun of him for three or four years, <clears throat> right? And if you're playing Magnus and Magnus has mate in one and you can't stop it and you're like, oh, your flag's down, bitch, then you make fun of him for years. But if you're a beginner, it's hard to see things. It's one tasty burger. What, what, what kind is it? Cheeseburger. No, no, no. What, where'd you get it? Like McDonald's, Wendy's, Big Kahuna, Big Kahuna Burger. That's that Hawaiian ver burger joint, isn't it? And I'm basically a vegetarian because, you know, my girlfriend's a vegetarian. But I do love a tasty burger. What do you have to wash this down? What's in there? Sprite. Good, good. Can I wash down? Sure. Now, where's the case? Yeah, if you're 1,200, you want to teach beginners the names of the pieces and how they move. And then when they don't remember, you can't get mad about it. Teachers have no patience because they don't understand why people don't understand. When you're a kindergarten teacher and a first grade teacher, and you're like, two plus two is four, two plus two is four, then half the kids go, um, excuse me, what's plus? Okay, that's what happens. They don't know what you're talking about. Two plus two is four. What does that mean? And if you're an adult who doesn't teach, you're like, oh, that kid's stupid because everybody knows two plus two is four. Everybody knows what plus is. No, they don't. You do, but some people don't. You don't know stuff until you know it. And so you have to be very patient with beginners and hope they can do anything you tell them, which they can't. Strobeck's Gaming. If I tell my students, go here, and then when your opponent plays stupid, then go here. And they're like, okay. Then I watch the game, and they go here. Their opponent goes here. They go here. Their opponent goes here. Then they ball up in the corner in a fetal position because now they don't know what to do. And I'm like, didn't I tell you to do that? And they're like, what? You know, you got to hammer it in them like MC Hammer. So when you show people things that are good to do, like get your pieces out, they don't do it. Then when you tell them again, they don't do it. Then when you tell them again, they don't do it. Then when you tell them again, they don't do it. But you can't give up. You got to be like, hey, you know, if you want to win at chess, you got to do these things, I'm telling you. What's my favorite chess book? Either San Antonio 60, 60, San Antonio 72, or uh, Confessions of a Chess Grandmaster by Soltis. Those books are great. My 60 Memorable Games is, is up there too by, by Bob it's Pisser. I mean by Bobby Fisher. So when you tell a student something, you want to show them again and again and again and again. And you want to show them like some checkmates so they know what checkmate is. Right? So you show them this position and you're like, how does black put white in check? That's way too hard. Because... They see where the pieces can go. Well, sometimes they don't. And if they do, they don't see where they can go next to move. For you, it's easy. For them, it's not. If you're like, this is mate, they're like, why is that mate? Because the queen attacks the king. And they're like, okay. But here, they can't see the queen h4 attacks the king. And that's understandable. You got to show them a million times. Then you should ask them... You say, that's checkmate. Why isn't this checkmate? How come it's not checkmate now? 
And they're like, I don't know, is that check? They still don't know what you're talking about. You gotta go slow. What's the meaning of life? Um, uh, I think you go around in time forever and on the way back, you roll down the window and, and you assassinate Hitler. But don't hit Eleanor Roosevelt by accident. That's the meaning of life. Thanks, Meepex. What you want, if you're teaching kids or beginners how to play, is they want to learn. They want to get better. They want to keep playing. Not that you're like, it's time for chess, and they go, aw. I wanted to play 75 hours of video games straight and then d die in a cafe. Right, if they want to do that, which is more likely, they're not going to get good at chess because they don't want to. They have to want to. They have to be like fascinated. You have to teach chess in an interesting way so it's not boring. So don't let Ben Stein teach your beginners. Anyone? Anyone? The thing is, everything is difficult for a beginner. Things that are easy to you, they weren't easy to you didn't know how to play chess. And I remember when I was learning how to play bridge, I didn't know what was going on. I was playing in bridge tournaments and I was trying to play legally. Trying to bid when it was my turn, make legal bids, play legal cards. If they play a heart, play a heart if you have one. And if you said, what, what was your strategy? That was my strategy. Make legal bids and play the cards legally. That was it. And I had no idea what the auction was. I didn't know what the contract was. I didn't know how many tricks we had taken. I didn't know what was left out of the suits. I was just playing legally. That's, that's when I started. Now, that's the way I am now after 30 years. No, no, now, you know, now it's different. I remember that show. So the point is, anything you tell a beginner, they don't know it. And after you tell them, they don't know it. If you're like, let me show this Morphe game. Why are you showing them a Morphe game? Don't do that. You have to explain every move why people made the moves. It should take you an hour to show a 15-move Morphe game. I'll show you one in two minutes. But if you're a beginner, it's going to be an hour. I'm going to be like, why did Morphe play here? And they'll be like, what does here mean? And I'll say the knight to f3. And they'll say, which one's the knight? And I'll say this one. And they'll say, isn't that a knight? And I'll say, no, just this one. That'll show them. And I'll say, what's this knight attacking? And they'll say, what does attacking mean? When I was teaching a lot of beginning kids, I came to notice a very high percentage of them didn't know what the word diagonal meant. If I said a bishop moves on the diagonal, they're like, moves on what? They don't know what I'm talking about. A lot of adults don't either. Like people who voted for Trump, I'm like, bishop moves on the diagonal? And they're like, huh? They don't know what a diagonal is. So you, you got you to, gotta, you know, figure out what they know and they don't know. And I said to the Trump guy, you see this guy? And they're like, yeah. Said, he's going to go into a room alone with these guys. And they're like, oh, that's the bishop. And I'm like, right. And these guys should run away. They shouldn't go towards the bishop. And I'm like, right. That's how you teach like a Trump guy. <sighs> Delicious. I should be a sit-down comedian. I like sitting down. Don't ask me questions unless there's a thousand cents to do donation next to it. Fine Gold Fan 7 has it figured out. Ah, oh, he cheered 1,000 incorrectly. Uh, <clears throat> I get capt captivated in his eyes. That's right. Uh, no, the basement's getting fixed. It's going to look different when we stream there. We're tearing up the whole basement, and then we're putting it, making it better. And by we, I mean the people we're paying. <clears throat> Be like Friday or Monday before we're back in the basement. Probably Monday. Maybe even Tuesday if it's to move everything down there. Uh, won't have puppies anymore. These don't make a lot of sense. Come on, hype train. We need three subs immediately. Or 2,000 cent to do's. We have 30 seconds. We have to get to level four. Come on. Okay, so you say, what's the knight attacking? Uh, after an hour, they say that. 
And you're like, is that protected? Can Black take the knight if you go there? And they're like, I don't know. Maybe the king can. You're like, no. And then when you show them who that protects it, and you're like, why does that protect it? They're like, I don't know. And you're getting, and then they're like, isn't, didn't, didn't the Count and the Duke play here? And you're like, oh yeah, that's right. See, you get confused easily. So the main mistake beginners have is they're taught chess by people who don't know how to teach beginners, so they don't like the game. You're making it way too difficult for them, and you're putting pressure on them to do something right. Doing things right isn't important. Do you play better or worse when you're drunk? Well, you know, I probably play a little worse. It's probably close. Doesn't really affect what I'm doing in chess, so. You know, I'm, I'd probably play worse, but I'm not sure. I play better. That's actually an interesting question. There are people who claim they play better when they're high than when they're not high. Now, when they're not high, they're so bad at chess that it doesn't even matter. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, they couldn't play worse. You know, one time in a team tournament in Michigan in 1979, it was me, my dad, and my brother. And there was a guy we knew. I won't say his name because I'm going to say stuff about him. And he said, like, he was up late last night, so he looked a little suspicious, if you know what I mean. And I was nine years old. And I'm like, that guy looks suspicious. Anyway, it turned out he was doing mushrooms all night. Or no, not mushrooms. He was doing acid all night. And I've been told by people who do acid that if you're playing chess and you're on acid, you don't really care about the result. Somehow we still did pretty well. Yeah, so I, I don't recommend that. Yeah. I recommend not being on acid and playing chess without any drugs and, you know, yeah. So forth. Mainly and so forth. And so on, yeah. Portobello mushrooms. Man, that's what I like to be on. Yeah, portobello mushrooms are great. Frankly, delicious. Yeah. Anyway, say no to drugs. Push pawns, not drugs, etc. Yeah. I'd like to thank my sponsor, NordVPN. No drugs. Mm -hmm. I don't understand half the chat, which is good. <clears throat> I thought you were my guardian angel. No. Then how do we go back in time and do all that stuff? Girl, I am high on PCP. <clears throat> go Chappelle Show. Okay. Now, another mistake people make when they talk to beginners about chess is start showing them and telling them about openings. That's the worst thing you can do. I mean, you might as well teach them golf. They'll be better at chess then because they'll be smarter. Don't show them any openings, okay? Nothing. Don't do that. Give them principles. Play in the middle. Get your bishops and knights out. And the most important principle, take their pieces and don't let them take yours. That's the principle that matters. The other stuff doesn't really matter for them. Take all your opponent's pieces. Then you're the favorite. Thanks, Fine Gold fan. If you weren't a GM, what career would you pursue? Still be chess. I was an IM for most of my career. Yeah. I don't know. Is sleeping on the couch a career? What about watching sports all night? Sounds like drinking Perrier. Can I get paid for that? You got to do what you're good at. And so on. Uh, yeah, and here's something very important, which I haven't talked about yet, because there's a lot of things to talk about. Thanks, Jude Green. Um, is the value of the pieces. And you have to go over and over and over with them, right? Don't give up your queen. Don't give up your rook. Sack the exchange, that's later. That's not for beginners. Sacrificing is not for beginners. Once a beginner can make legal moves every move and knows the names of the pieces and doesn't forget, you can show them very, very, very basic checkmates. The most basic. Thanks, Morbier. And even those are too hard for beginners. What's happening here? Somebody likes something. Oh, yeah. 
I've been very active on Twitter lately. I got I got to thirteen thousand followers. Then like a week and a half later, fourteen thousand. I had ten thousand followers like six months ago. Go Twitter, I I guess. Yeah. All right. No more drug talk, or you're all banned. This is beginner talk. If you're a beginner and you don't know stuff, you have to do it a million times. You're not going to know it by somebody showing you once. The truth hurts. <clears throat> if you think this is checkmate and the guy's like, no, it's not, you're going to start crying. You're going to be like, but Trump is the president. Those voting were all fake. Okay. And you're not going to believe the truth. Thanks, Feingold fan. Do I think AI will take over the world? Alan Iverson's been retired for a long time. Even at his best, I don't think so. Now, for further information, you could talk to Alan Iverson and World Be Free, and they'll tell you whether AI will take over the world. But I would say no. And convincing people this isn't me just because you know it's not made isn't easy. Okay, When it's check, it's not necessarily made. And again, you want to show beginners positions and ask them where the checks are. Like, show me a check. His crossover is pretty sick, though. It was pretty good crossover. It's true. World Be Free wasn't as good. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Molo Yolo Lee. I hope I said that right. Yeah. Was AI the original ball hog? There had to be one before him. But seriously, everybody says this, and I'm somebody, so I should say it. Um, I would be a good addition to um, NBA coaching and NFL, but more NBA, more NBA. Um, because the NBA players do a lot of things that are strategically incorrect and low percentage. And they need that explained to them because what they want is a fat, out of shape, old white guy telling them how to play basketball better. That's what they want, right? And I would explain to them about the percentage of what they're doing and when their team does well and what they should be doing. And then I would be, you know, like shoved in a locker and never let out. But I would be helpful to the coaching staff. 1,000 cent to do. I'm a regular Popovich. Yeah, but Popovich shouldn't preach because he's in trouble deep. I beat Popovich once when he made a horrible blunder that I tricked him into. Go Pete Maravich. <laughs> the answer is fries. I'm an NBA player and that's what I want. Exactly. Yeah. So let me give you an example. Okay. Steph Curry and, and Trey uh, Young. <clears throat> Uh, or is it Trey Lorenz? Uh, they take a lot of bad shots. And their excuse is, I make those bad shots. But actually, they don't. And what they need to do, even though they both have a lot of assists, is have more assists. And the team would do better if they had more assists and less points. So instead of 12 assists and 30 points have 18 points and 18 assists. When really, really, really good players who score a lot get 30, 40, 50 points, their teams don't win more often. That just means they're shooting the ball every time. Thanks, Feingold fan seven. And it's just padding your stats. It's like, I'm going to take 70 shots and I got 40 points and my team lost by 40. And people get really excited when Steph Curry takes the longest three ever and he makes it. But that's not what basketball is about. It's about percentage. It's about getting your team involved because you don't want to play with a guy who's going to do that. You want to play with a guy who's going to distribute the ball. And saying things like, you know, tr that these people who lead the league in assists like Chris Paul, Chris Paul's a good example of what I want in a player because he, he wants the team to do well, not get 30 points a game. Because he doesn't get 30 points a game, you guys think less of him because you don't understand. And his team is in first and everybody says he's the greatest. And you're like, he's the greatest. 
When I say everybody says he's the greatest, players say he's the greatest. Because his team wins. You want to play with Chris Paul. You want to make people around you better. And that's something Allen Iverson didn't do. Allen Iverson scored 1,000 points a game and took 1,000 shots a game. And if you're playing on his team, you're like, ugh, can I have the ball? And the answer is no. And that's not how you win at basketball. If you want to win at basketball, look at the Spurs teams, look, you know, when they were good. Look at the Pistons when they were good. That's how you win. And in chess, and like other sports, the way you win, the way you win is you don't make mistakes. They're always making these crazy passes in the NBA and turning the ball over. Horrible. Chris Paul's never won a championship either. Until now. It's a team game. And if you want to win championships, you have to have a good team. And when you have ball hogs on the team, they don't win championships. you got to have the team like the team's good, like the 83-76ers. Are they 83? Are they 76? Nobody knows. But they're the 83-76ers. Now, that, now that's a team. Kobe. Yeah. Go baseball. Yes, yeah, song and sane and pray for rain. So if you're a beginner, you want to minimize mistakes. You don't want to play brilliant moves. A brilliant move is a move that doesn't hang all of your pieces. This is a brilliant move because any grandmaster would play that. This is a brilliant move. <clears throat> this move loses a pawn and you didn't see the guy could take it. When you're moving to the fourth and fifth row, write this down, watch this video again, your opponent may be able to take whatever you put there. If they can, you have to evaluate that. Usually just don't do it if they can take it. Sometimes you can take back or you take something bigger. But <clears throat> that's where you're going to lose all your pieces on these two ranks. So you have to be extra careful. And if you want to play good chess, I'm not saying you do, you have to play <clears throat> uh, at a pace where you're able to play good chess. So if you're playing a three-minute game and you're a beginner, you, you can't, there's nothing you can do. You can't make good moves. So if you're a beginner, you want to give yourself a lot of time so you can try to figure out what's going on because it's not obvious what's going on. To a super grandmaster, it's obvious. A lot of positions. And for a beginner, there are no obvious what's going on. So you need more time. Etc. Uh, yeah, castling, you know, when they can make all the other moves. Yeah. But, but, but again, a lot of the mistakes that are made in the NBA are people showing off and doing things that are too complicated because that's what the fans want. The fans don't want to see the San Antonio Spurs win with good defense and ball distribution and one or two fantastic players. They want to see Russell Westbrook run as fast as he possibly can, insanely. They want to see LeBron score 35 points. They don't care how he does it. They don't care if they win. They want to see all their favorite players always injured and really old. That's what they want to see. But if you want to win, you got to play defense. And they don't play defense in the NBA because it's illegal. The NBA told the players no defense allowed. Okay, now who's a great defensive player? Who's a great rebounder? Who's a great team player? My favorite player, Bill Russell. 11 championships, 11, just like you. That's a good NBA player. He's not throwing the ball out of bounds. He's not behind his back doing some trick. He's not shooting, he's not making it rain with threes because they didn't have threes then. He's not dunking the ball and then hanging on the rim and then, and then you know, he's not doing any of that. He's just playing good basketball. If you don't like it, too bad. He won't sign your autograph either. And fundamentals of any game are very important. Even when you're a super grandmaster, a lot of the mistakes they make are breaking the fundamentals because when they break the fundamentals, they're usually right. So at some point... You don't even care about the fundamentals anymore. You're like, well, I can calculate 20 moves ahead. Okay. The engine doesn't care about fundamentals. Leela, 
and Stockfish and, and, and Komodo, they calculate 25 moves ahead and say that wins. So when they make moves, they confuse humans because the, the fundamentals don't matter to them. They're like, this move wins by force. That's what I care about. And if you're a beginner, that's what you should care about. If you're a more advanced player, 1,500, 2,000 plus, you can't calculate 20 moves ahead. So you need fundamentals. You can't do it. When you try to do it, you don't do it right. On move two, you missed everything. Also on move one. Also before you started calculating. Also, you're not playing chess, you're dreaming. Also, you're not dreaming, you're in a coma. Also, you died 10 years ago. How are you even listening to me? That's how loud I am. So remember all that. Yeah, exactly. Who's the best NBA player of all time? Feingold fan seven? Uh, I like Bill Russell. Go Bill Russell. Jordan was okay. Not a nice person. Not necessarily the best team player. Yeah, Bill Russell. He's taller. Man, Bill Russell kick your ass today. Maybe. He's not too young anymore. Bill Russell has a serious case of not being young, but he's still tall. Yeah. Bill Walton? Eh. 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 What about Oscar the Gra Oscar Robertson was great. Yeah. Elijah one's underrated? Agreed. I wouldn't pick him over Bill Russell, but he is underrated. Yeah, I like Bird a lot too. I don't know why I like Bird more than Magic Johnson. I should like Magic Johnson more. Probably because I'm always living on the east side of the country, so I see Bird more. Um, but Magic Johnson played for Michigan State, so I, I should like him more. Somehow I like Bird more. I don't know why. Probably Magic Johnson was better. Uh -huh. Kareem was unstoppable. So Shaq would throw you to the ground and then dunk. Kareem would do the sky hook, and then he just did the sky hook, and that was it. And then he always made it. Man, that was good scoring. Yeah, Kareem was the best in the low post. Go Kareem. Don't tell Will Chamberlain that. Okay, back to chess. Um, so if you're a beginner, play thousands and thousands and thousands of chess games. That's how you get better. If you do something wrong that you know is wrong, try to remember it. A lot of things you do that are wrong, you don't know that are wrong. For some reason, <clears throat> a percentage of beginners don't understand losing pieces is bad. One of the reasons they don't know that is because when they're playing other beginners, they're both hanging all their pieces. So it's just something that happens. Like, yeah, I hung a knight, then he hung a rook, then I hung my queen, then I captured his king, then he captured my king, then I promoted to a king, and then I couldn't checkmate him because he had no king. So for a beginner, those things are difficult. Beginners have to realize if you take your opponent's pieces and they don't take your pieces, you're going to win. The other stuff doesn't matter much. The other stuff is for very advanced beginners, higher rated than the stream is for. And, if you're, and again, if you're teaching a beginner, you have to go as slow as possible and explain everything 100 times and you have to tell them simple things. You can't tell them things where you're wrong. Don't do that. Make sure you're right. Like, oh, that loses a queen, so that's bad. You're probably right. Yeah, probably not. MJ was the best. Michael Jackson was pretty good. I wouldn't call him the best. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think Mike, if, if you're talking about Jordan instead of Michael Jackson, you have to, he had to put his hands up to be the best. Hands down, no. Then he wouldn't be good at all. He has to put his hands up. He can't, can't do anything. Yeah. What if you play too quickly because of ADHD? Play slower. Man, that was easy. Man, you got any tough questions? Uh, go Feingold Fan 7. I'm starting to agree with him because he's donating a lot. So he's, he's making a lot of sense. Yeah.
Ever played that? No. Have I ever done that? No. How do you reconcile quantum theory with general relativity? I don't reconcile it too often. Yeah. I, I didn't understand quantum mechanics at all. So I went to the hardware store and I bought 14 strings and now I'm okay. Yeah. Chess Brainiac is ready with a party of 690. He must be a Brainiac. 690. No, Bender knows he's not funky enough to be a globetrotter. Yeah. Go, Tom Brady. I mean, go and don't play anymore. Oh, snap. All right, questions are shallow and pedantic. Did somebody give a shout out? Oh, they did give a shout out. Thanks, Brainiac. You're the smartest person who's rated me unless I forgot somebody else. Yeah, you, you should never resign. And when you're a beginner, you should never, ever resign. And if you vote for Trump, you know, you have mental issues and you're a beginner. A lot of people are saying, don't resign. Don't do that. Do you believe we're living in a simulation? I do not believe that. Yeah. Etc. Mike Puddin had 690. Hooray. We are living in a chess simulation. Uh, does streaming for a job make you hard to be an anti-tech curmudgeon? Uh, I'll get back to you on that. What? Uh, spaghetti, SpaghettiOs. Yeah, I don't think Joe Biden has any dementia. He does have a speech impediment, but that's, that is his whole life. But what he says makes sense. I don't know if Trump has dementia or he's just really stupid in general. I think it's a little of both. I think he's got a little, little action going on. What's my favorite thing about life? I think you giving me a thousand sentences every minute. Biden has a serious case of old. But so do a lot of people. People live longer than they used to. Yeah. Okay, back to chess. In chess, the main reason to move pawns at the beginning is to control the center, but it's to let your other pieces out. And a lot of beginners, for reasons I don't understand, but I'm going to tell you what they are, is they move pawns every move. And if you have a student who's a beginner and they move pawns every move and you tell them not to, but they do anyway, the reason is they don't know how the back pieces move. So they're just moving pawns. That is a true story. And you have to just show them positions where the bishops and knights can move them and ask them to move them and they can't. So you have to, you have to make sure people know the rules before you teach them stuff. You got to teach them the rules, the names of the pieces. You shouldn't be making a lot of pawn moves in the opening. First 10 moves, two or three moves are pawn moves. The rest are with bishops and knights. And if you learn how to castle, good for you. How would you respond to the Stafford Gambit? I'd probably laugh a lot and take all my opponent's pieces. Although I play the Stafford Gambit. Yeah. Hmm. Bernie Sanders is too old. Also, Biden is too old. I'm not... The, People in their 80s shouldn't be president. That's not, that doesn't represent our country. President should be between like 35 and 60. And 60 is getting a little old for me. Yeah, I don't, I don't like all the presidents being in their 70s and 80s. That's not, I'm not, that doesn't make any sense to me. That doesn't represent the country at all. Yeah, they don't know what's going on. They know what was going on 40 years ago. Yeah, they don't know what's going on. Terrible. Boo. No, Biden was like my seventh pick. But you can't really compare Biden and Trump. Trump's a maniac, evil, you know, horrible. I mean, he's it's not in the he's not even human. Wait, who gave money and I, I didn't see it? Fine gold fan. Can you show a Stafford Gambit refutation? Well, again, that's not the point of this this lecture here. Yeah. This is the Stafford Gambit. If you're a beginner, your opponent just blundered a pawn, so you're up a pawn. So now you're winning. 
Hooray. There was a game played today, uh, Komsky versus Doofus, some I am. Did, he, did Komsky castle here? No, Komsky played here, I think. No, no, he castled, obviously. Sorry. Yeah, what did Komsky do here? Komsky did this. Then here. No, he played D he played Queen G3 after D4. Or before D4. Yeah, Komsky lost in 17 moves today in the title Tuesday. His opponent played here and then played here and then played here. Komsky wasn't familiar with the Stafford Gambit. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but I think the whole world exploded. Yeah. Stafford Gambit is just like a joke. It's something you play in Blitz and Bullet, and then you hope your opponent makes a lot of blunders. Right. There's a lot of openings like that. They're just jokes. That's one of them. Yeah, he wouldn't play a staff for Gambit in a rated game because it's ridiculous. Yeah, Rosen plays it in Blitz and Bullet, and so do I. It's just like a joke. Yeah. No, the Danish Gambit, that's solid. Okay, M365 just asked an interesting question, which I talked about earlier. You're just starting to learn chess, and you just turned 50. Openings are irrelevant. Don't learn openings. You need to play thousands and thousands and thousands of chess games. And then you learn patterns. Then you'll decide later when you're a better player what openings you like. Not because somebody told you about them. And it'll probably happen organically from you playing without knowing any openings. It could be you're like, I love E4. I don't know if that's an opening or not, but I love it. Or, or D4, less likely, but possible. Or some other move. And that might be like you. That's who you are. <clears throat> what you need to do is learn how the pieces move, learn the names of the pieces, learn how to set them up, and then learn very, 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 very basic tactics. Basic means like in this position, do you see pawn takes pawn or you don't? And if you play here, do you see they're attacking their queen? Do you see they're attacking your bishop or you don't? And those are really basic, simple things that all beginners need to get better at. And then you'll learn more complicated stuff like openings later. If you are the world's leading authority on the Rui Lopez and you're a beginner, you're still a beginner. Because you're going to play E4 and then if your opponent doesn't play here, your Rui Lopez knowledge is useless. And if your opponent doesn't play here, your Rui Lopez knowledge is useless. And if your opponent plays, I don't know, here, your Rui Lopez knowledge is useless. And if you're black and they play any move other than here, it just, it doesn't matter. Openings don't matter when you're a beginner. What matters is to a beginner is playing legal moves, knowing the names of the pieces, and playing thousands of games. Is the Scott game worth playing if you like it? Again, these aren't related to the... Feingold fan, you're asking a lot of questions not related to the lecture. 4,000 viewers ado. Hooray. Yes. No, I know that's what you focus on. Probably meant the openings. Yeah. No, but basically, 90% of teachers and students want to talk about the opening 100% of the time, and it's irrelevant. It's like saying, I want to be a plumber, so I'm going to go skydiving. And when I skydive... I'm going to look in people's houses and see their toilets and see if they're working. That's what learning the opening is to getting better at chess. If you want to be a good plumber, skydiving's not... Okay, and if you want to be good at chess, opening is irrelevant. What's relevant is learning the very, very, very basics and trying, which leads to failure, obviously, not to give all of your pieces away and trying to take your opponent's pieces. The only thing you do is, as a beginner is play legal moves, take your opponent's pieces, don't let them take yours. If somehow you master that and you beat all beginners because you take their pieces, they don't take yours. Somehow. 
when I beat somebody my own strength or around my strength and I had to explain it to you, it's very complicated. There's a lot going on. There's a lot that didn't happen that we analyzed. Some of it were right, some were wrong. Some of the stuff we did play, we were right, we were wrong. It's very complicated. If I play a beginner, I take all of their pieces, not because I'm a grandmaster, because I'm not a beginner. They just give all their pieces away and I take them. And then they think the game was close. Like, remember when I lost that night? You didn't win anything else the first 15 moves. Right. The game's not close. I just take all their pieces. They have no pieces left. It's not close. And if you're a beginner, you want to avoid giving all your pieces away because other things that you learn don't matter. Let me give you an example. You play perfect. Your opponent plays bad. You play perfect. Your opponent plays bad. You play perfect, your opponent plays bad, etc. Mainly etc. Okay. And this game, white looks like a grandmaster, and black looks like the biggest doofus ever. And the engine says white is plus four. So white's completely winning. If two super grandmasters were playing a slow game, white would always win. Always. Okay. But I can ruin it in one move because I don't see anything. So now my opponent plays here and I go here. Okay, and now, and now I'm losing. And now I play in the middle and then they go here. Now I'm incredibly losing. Now I put my rook in the middle and I hang my queen. Now I'm the most losing. And I played great and you played terrible. Then I gave my pieces away because I didn't see it. Okay, terrible. And giving your pieces away and taking pieces for free is much more important than anything else. Unfortunately, beginners and average players and advanced players take it too far. And they make moves that attack things because they're hoping their opponent blunders. Okay, so let's say, for example, you're black and you go here which is a rare move. And I'm like, why'd you go there? And you're like, I'm attacking his pawn. I hope he doesn't see it. Attacking things isn't something you should be striving to do. Taking things is what you should do. Not because you're trying to take them, because that's what happened. <clears throat> so your opponent goes here, and this is the book move. And you're, you don't know any book. You're just like, my knight's attacked. I'm great. And I'm going to go here attacking his pawn. I hope he doesn't see it. Then he takes your knight. Then you're like, oh, man. Now, in the beginner world, your opponent goes here. You take the pawn that you were hoping to take, and you think you're a genius. You're like, oh, man, I played. I take this pawn. I take this pawn again, and then I took it. Bam. Gotcha, bitch. That's what you're thinking. Then when you play somebody better, you just lose all of your pieces because they don't make those blunders. But it happens a lot when beginners play, that one of them is making a lot of errors and their opponent's not punishing them. However, they are punishing their opponent's errors, so they think they're a genius. They think they played perfect and you made 10 mistakes. Turns out you both made 10 mistakes, but one of them didn't get punished. So he looks like a genius. And you could see this like in this position. Let's say white sees his pawns attacked, doesn't see that and goes here. And black's like, yes! I'm the best. And black's like, white's like, oh, no. He, oh, no. So he goes here because he wants to save his queen instead of his rook. And black doesn't see that. So black takes the rook. Right? Then white's like, yes, I took a pawn and I trapped the rook. And then his opponent would be like, oh, my God, he trapped my rook. Well, I better get my knight out then. Okay? This is bad calculation because there's things left on the table that can be taken. For you guys, you're just laughing and laughing and thinking that's funny. It's not funny. That's what happens. What happens is if you don't see captures and your opponent doesn't see captures, there's a lot of mistakes being made. And those matter a lot more than the basic principles. When you have captures you can make like this one or like this one, you got to see that. Thanks, Fine Gold Fan. I've seen that all, it's all I see. 
That, that I see that every game. Okay. When you have a capture that wins whatever you captured, try not to miss it. When your opponent captures your pieces, because as I said earlier today, you're moving your pieces here. Don't miss that. Right, Karen? Yeah. See? How's it going? Right. You want to say hi? Yeah, I'm Yay. You want to sit down or it's too hard? I don't even have a chair. Hey. <laughs> I don't see you because you're not on the... There you go. Yeah, we don't mm -hmm. have another chair up here. Okay. There's that, the metal one behind me. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll come in a little bit. I'm doing some stuff. Hey, everybody. 4,000 viewers. What else? Mm -hmm. There's a guy called FeingoldFan7. And he gives me a thousand cents to do every minute. Yeah, I saw him. Yeah, mm -hmm. usually with some silly question. Mm -hmm. The last time there was no silly question. Hey, chess mining, how's it going? Thanks, Grunge War. Grunge Thanks, Dots. War. Yeah, I was watching a little bit. Um, I took the dog out because it. Hey, NordVPN did the thing without us telling him. The Nightbot. Nobody typed that, so it is doing it like you said. It's on a timer. Right. Oh, now, okay. now we know it's on a timer. Oh, okay. All right, well, you guys keep going. Yeah. I hear the fan going. Stand. The fan has to be going. It's a laptop. <laughs> Is this your first time using a computer? Or you no. Know? Yeah. It's been longer than a minute. No. More. Professional athletes always wanting more. Yeah, you probably didn't know that computers and laptops and such have fans inside of them to stop them from overheating. And I've been streaming for hours, so the fan's going. That's, that's how computers work. But anyway, I'm glad you learned something today. Yeah. And so forth. No, it feels good. It feels good. Yeah. Did you take the dogs out like they said? Woo, 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 woo. Lord Jehovah is the number one fan. All right. <clears throat> it's liquid cooled. That's That sounds interesting. I don't know. I can hear the fan. Wah. Well, that means you haven't gone deaf yet. Or... You can't hear the fan, and you are going deaf. You're just hearing stuff. And it's also possible. <clears throat> I can get the dust replaced. I can take the dust out and put in different dust. So I'll try to do that. Yeah. Et cetera. And the fan is not, you could push the laptop back a little bit. Yeah. Microphone that would help. Yeah. It would? Oh, oh, for them, yeah. I like to annoy them more. Can I put it on top? I can barely hear the fan. I'm sitting next to it. And so forth. I mean, I can hear now that you told me. Man, my periods are all downstairs in the fridge. The fridge probably isn't even plugged in anymore. Terrible. <laughs> Yay, 1,000 cent to do's. Your questions, Feingold Fan 7 aren't related to the lecture topic. So they're not silly in general, but this says lessons for beginners. And I'm like, don't give your queen away. And you're like, in the Max Longa attack on move 11, do you think the improvement found last year by, by uh, you know, uh, Stockfish is better than what was played two years earlier? As a beginner stream, come on. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, I was watching a show before you guys were born, and it was a famous guy, but I don't know who it was. When I say he's famous, you've never heard of him, but famous intellectual. He lived like in the woods somewhere, and he didn't have a refrigerator. And they said, why don't you have a refrigerator? And he said, it's too noisy. He says, I don't want to sit in my house and hear noise. So he lived in the middle of nowhere. And he said, fridges make noise. I don't want to hear that. He said, no matter how quiet the fridge is, it's making noise. And I was like, a fridge makes noise? I guess so. And he didn't mean like the fridge was broken. He meant any noise annoyed him. And I said, what noise annoys that guy? And he said, any noise annoys him, but a noisy noise annoys him most. And I was like, all right. Yeah, and it was Ted Kaczynski, that's right. Yeah. And you can do tactics, like let's say you're on chess.com. And then let's do let's do a tactic thing. Let me show you what I mean. Although I'll never find it, but let's pretend I could find it. Okay, I found it. And then we'll do custom. And then we'll do, you know, I don't know, zero, 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 one to 500. All right. Okay, well, this is way too hard. 
So they're crazy if they think this is a, a beginner's puzzle. Uh, puzzles. Okay. So this is black to move. And I told you to give me puzzles that are rated 0 to 500. So this puzzle is you go here, a forking, skewering, attacking, pinning, and then you take this. And this was rated 100. That's ridiculous. That puzzle's way harder than 100. It's way harder. So even chess.com doesn't know how to rate their beginner puzzles. Terrible. Okay. Again, this is too hard for a beginner. I asked it for the easiest puzzles and they're too hard. Now, if you're an advanced player, they're very easy because they're for beginners. But <clears throat> if somebody barely knows how the pieces move to the rules, this is ridiculous. And this one is you're lining it up on the bubble up so you can check and then give checkmate. That was rated 100, but again, that's nobody rated 100 that could ever solve anything. Terrible. I can't even solve this. This one's a fork, which I wouldn't teach to a beginner until they knew how the pieces moved and they could see check. For a beginner, it's impossible to see this forks the king and rook. It's doubly impossible to see, then it stops that. So if you give this to your beginner student, it's way too hard, way too hard. You're expecting to see this, it attacks this and this, and it stops that. That's absolutely ridiculous. It just shows they don't understand what it, it should be like. <clears throat> there's a knight here, and there's and, and then and then black goes here attacking the knight, and the other things are gone, and then knight takes rook. That's that would be okay. Yeah, terrible. No, everybody overestimates beginners. Beginners are beginners. This would be like a strong player would, would, would do that. Yeah. A lot of people rated 1,400, 1,500 wouldn't consider this move because they're scared to death of this pawn. And they, they're preventing it from queening and they're not going to move their knight away. They're not looking at moving their knight away. They're like, oh my God, this is queening. Should I go here? Should I go here? You know, should, should I resign? They're, should I go here? They're not thinking about like moving it away from here. That's the worst thing that's ever happened. Yeah. Okay, so terrible. I need a hint. All right. That was too easy because it's for beginners. All right. This one, your pawn's attacked. You only have one way to stop it. You go here. Okay. Now, this, you have two legal moves. So, you know, it's still too hard. But you have to stop the black king. That says it's rated 340 something. Yeah, these are all way too hard. All these puzzles are too hard. This puzzle is insanely hard. This is, is ridiculous. I did 0 to 500 and they're all too hard. That was rated 100. Terrible. I've never been so angry. This one's way too hard also. Because it looks like this wins and this wins. Because after this move, you're threatening the rook and the bishop. And after this move, you're letting him promote. So this is like a 1400 problem. And they're going to say it's like 300. Yeah. So basically, I'm ashamed of chess.com. Because these are way too hard. Way too hard. Yeah. And that's what people do when they teach beginners. They give them complicated problems. And then people don't want to play chess anymore. If I was teaching a beginner who barely knew how the pieces moved, they wouldn't understand the answer. You guys don't even know the answer. You're just pretending you do. Yeah. So for example, after king takes, you're threatening this and this. However, white can play rook here and then, and then white's fine. After this, if they queen, you can take it and you end up up a bishop. That says it's 412 rated. That's just ridiculous. I mean, that puzzle, I could see 1,200 players getting that wrong. Terrible. I mean, this is beyond absurd. These aren't beginner puzzles at all. This would be one that you guys can't solve. I know I can't. Terrible. I hope this is the right move because I don't even know if it's the right move. That's how hard this is. I mean, this, is a, this isn't a beginner puzzle. If you show this to a beginner, you should be fired as a teacher. I can't even solve this puzzle. All right, so maybe I could.
But still, two two eighty two. No, no. Right. So so this this is this is all terrible. Yeah, everything that's ever happened is terrible. I can't find puzzles easy enough for beginners. They're assuming you know how all the pieces move and you can see like two move tactics. That's ridiculous. And that's probably because somebody like Danny Wrench or somebody of that ilk, they don't know what they, to them, this is a beginner puzzle, right? And puzzles that Danny Wrench can't solve, which is most of them, are beginner puzzles to, you know, the best players in the world. Carlson and Enviel are on the floor laughing and Danny's getting mad, right? And Danny's plotting his revenge, right? Now, speaking of Danny, let me, I, I, got, a, I got a symbol for that. Let's see, where'd, where'd Karen put that? That's not frequently used enough, that's for sure. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, there's, there's the Danny, yeah, there we go. Yeah, right, in a puzzle, you know it's a puzzle. In a game, you don't know when the, the puzzle position happens. What puzzles are good for isn't for solving them. Puzzles are good for pattern recognition. So this puzzle, <clears throat> you're supposed to learn lining the queen and rook up is, is, is good for giving checkmate. Now what the puzzle should do isn't play this idiotic move. It should play here because now knight d8 wins for black and other moves lose. Bishop f8 loses... Queen d8 loses and king d7 loses. So if you're a beginner, this move causes a lot of problems because you're not going to see after king here that there's this discovered check, but, you know, knight check wins. But you might see queen takes f7 check. You might block with the bishop missing its hanging. You might block with the queen missing the point. So it should do this. So everybody at chess.com should be fired, but that's been the case for years. That's just how they do it. Right, saying this is like a 200 or 300 puzzle is, is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. These are all way too hard, all of them. The, the puzzles you want are, there's a queen here to rook here, and it's black's move, and black is, and then, you, and then like one move is checkmate and one's not. So let me show you what I mean. I'll give you a puzzle. Okay. Okay, now this is a puzzle. This is a puzzle for a beginner, but it's really hard. Because to a beginner, these both look like mate, or maybe neither looks like mate because they don't see the rook as defending it. I would say this is advanced beginner. Right, and this, this is, I mean, some of them are going to play here, missing the knight can take. Some of them won't see this as mate because they don't see the rook defending it. And this is, even this is like almost too hard. But this is a lot easier than the puzzle they gave where you're going here to threaten here. Come on. Oh, never been so angry. Yeah. Etc. He's no average Joe. 2200 is advanced beginner. These are beginner beginners. Yeah, you got to watch it here. Yeah. Exactly. I'm always serious. Yeah. The first like five to 10 puzzles in Puzzle Rush, some of them are for beginners. These aren't. Some of them are like mate, like, you know, or pawn takes queen. That's, <clears throat> that's what you want. Yeah. 100 Easy Checkmates by Larry Evans. He got checkmated a lot. I've heard of that book. <clears throat> also, there's Chess Catechism. Don't forget that. The beginning player, stay out of my booze. Who was the most intimidating impotent you ever faced? Uh, oh, opponent. That's not a good way to spell opponent. I'm not even sure if you meant opponent because you spelled it so badly. Um, yeah, I don't know. Somebody. They're all intimidating. Important? Impotent? What? <clears throat> It's true. I didn't. So you think I'm joking? Chess Catechism. Look it up. Fisher teaches chess is pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Yeah. No, you have to teach beginners that you don't capture the king. You attack, and they don't like that. They like capturing the king. 
they don't like the, they think that's checkmate. You check somebody, they don't see they're in check, then you take their king and say checkmate. Terrible. Classical streak as a titled player? I don't know. A lot? Yeah, you don't want to teach bad habits like taking the king is normal. You want to teach them that taking the queen king is weird and it's only in a very specific form of chess and don't play that chess. Don't even tell them you can take the king. Just say you can't. Terrible. Uh, the matrices, what was it me? Teach that. That's later. Castling and Ampassan are later. Years later. See, thousands of years later. You teach castling before Ampassan. Ampassan you never have to teach. You teach that way later. They'll never understand it. No. Yeah. It doesn't let you take the king. Like, I'm trying to take the king. I can't, I can't do it. I can't move for either side. Nice. I can't play king h1. No. I can't move. I'm in check. Boo. Thanks, Shane Kane. Shane, come back. Right. You don't, don't teach on Passant. Promoting, you can tell them about it, but tell them not to worry about it. Do you think Karpov would have beaten Fisher? No. You spell would have wrong. Uh, no. Fisher would have won. Current puzzle level is Novotny trick. Good, good. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. You guys are the best. It's time to raid somebody. I raid you. You raid me. Except for one thing. Let's raid my favorite GM, GM Canty. Wait, that didn't work? All that stuff I typed? Ah. Oh. Any questions for the next minute, we will we'll answer. Because, you know, you guys didn't ask enough questions. I am the best. Thank you. Thanks, Flying Gold Fan 7, for the sub. Good night and good night. Yeah, I'm the best, except for everybody else. What do you think about the person who knocks down their king to show that he resigned? Well, I don't really think about that. 100 cents to do a Super Bowl prediction. Um, I guess Cincinnati will win. D it's destiny. Now, this is not a joke, and it's easily looked up on you know Google. <clears throat> Cincinnati closed schools the Monday after the Super Bowl. They're already preparing to win. If they lose, they'll look pretty silly. D. Gertz, 84. My two favorite teams played last, you know, the, the Chiefs and the Bengals, and I wasn't sure who to root for. So I, I still don't know who I should have rooted for. Rooting? Yeah. Best way to face the Sicilian? Well, <clears throat> if it's a pizza, probably standing in front of it and then, like, get an angle where you can cut the pizza. <clears throat> Etc. And don't and don't forget it. Yeah. Subscriber only chat. No. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed the the room we're streaming from. <clears throat> It'll be different on Monday, hopefully. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Fine Gold Fan, for donating. Bye.